entrance, very neoclassical again. A uh, year after it was opened, it was badly damaged by a fire, in which George repaired for $4,000. A neighbor bank, Dixie State Bank, will scale down neoclassical mm -hmm. building. It's 1928, built in 27 and 28, opened in February of 1928. The bank on the first floor, and then uh, the Vest law, <coughs> law Office on the second floor. I've also been told that he built Boone County Chevrolet, mm. which was a surprise. My father was working with him at that time. Yes. That was uh, made by movable forms, poured concrete. Do you know what, I'm guessing 1920. Do you know one way or the other? That sounds about right. About right, about right. I mean, 1915 to 1925, cars were hot, so. Yeah. <coughs> then another surprise. Anybody know that building? Phone company building in, in, in uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Florence? Yeah. yeah. I'd be willing to bet. This is 40, 1948 or so. I would bet that Kyle probably designed this. But there's a picture in her collection um, that says, thank, you know, basically, thank you very much, our, you know, from Consolidated Telephone Company. A picture from this time. So when the building was done, they thanked them for their work, so I guess. But I've not been able to track down any solid evidence other than that. I also suspect that um, the Florence Fire Station may have been built by Nicholson. But I haven't found any evidence to support that yet. But it would make perfect sense. Beautiful brick construction. That built about the same time, 1948. Uh, he built the old Walton City Building, which was converted to the James Theater in 1938. Now, I don't remember if he built the Walton City Building and then did the conversion or just the, just the conversion. But this building was torn down in the 70s, I believe. And then some of the other things I found that I don't have um, examples of right now are the courthouse edition I mentioned earlier, Herzog Jewelers in Covington. I don't know when that building was done, 20s, I think. In 1938, Kyle drew up plans for the Howard House on Hicks Pike. I don't know if anybody knows any Howards on Hicks Pike. I don't know if the house was ever built. In the same year, Raymond drew up plans for the Clifford Powers House. Does anybody know that name? I know Clifford Powers. You know, you know Clifford I don't Powers. know the house. I don't know what that. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 his nickname was Piz Powers. Piz? Yeah. Piz Powers. Because that name rings a bell, and I can't figure out where he lived, or whether or not this house was ever built. Was he Walton? Probably. He was a crony of my father. Okay. Um, and as far as we could find... I was born next door to this Ford garage there. <laughs> what what uh, address? And it, it's now a parking lot. <laughs> uh -huh. There is now a delicatessen there. We lived there till 34, and we lost it in the Depression. Uh -huh. He mortgaged, my father mortgaged the house to <coughs> pay for more construction on houses that he was building taking second mortgages. Mm -hmm. They couldn't pay the first mortgage, much less the second one, so we lost the house. Oh, man. I know it was, uh, very little was built in the early 30s, mm -hmm. but I, I do know how the Nicholson survived yeah. the 30s. I'll mention that again in a minute. The only trouble we ever found with the Nicholson project was uh, between 1929 and 1931, a man named Johnston Northcutt sued Nicholson for faulty construction of a house in the Arcadia subdivision. And Northcutt was eventually awarded 2,500 damages. So that was one mistake in the history. You know, we talked about how, what a taskmaster George was and stern character and all that. He, he wasn't all hard, hard as stone. He did have a lighter side. This is the uh, womanless wedding cast. It's a 1934 fundraiser held at the Walton Gym, admission 25 cents, 15 cents for children. <laughs> Fundraiser for the PTA, the cast included C.D. Benson as General Pershing, Clifton Mayhew as Mrs. Roosevelt, and then George was the grandmother. <laughs> there he is. <coughs> grandmother of the, of the bride, I believe. And then another great picture that we found, and I had to figure this one out. 
the George of the Florida ostrich farm, about 1910. This was apparently a big attraction in the Jacksonville area, in northern Florida. It opened in 1907. I have no idea when it closed, but it was a big deal. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, postcards online from the, the Florida Jackson, or that the uh, Florida ostrich farm of uh, from this period. It's just it's hilarious because they raced ostr ostriches. <laughs> You, you were talking about George being a perfectionist. Yeah. I worked with a black man named Ari Dixon who worked for George a whole lot. And George had assigned him a job of building somewhat of a curved sidewalk up to the building. And he just laid it out there, do this, that, and the other. Well, Ari laid it out using his boards and curves around through there. He thought he'd done a great job. And Mr. Nicholson come there and he said, uh, I don't like it. And Ari, who I work with a whole lot, said, what about it, Mr. Nicholson? Don't you like? He said, I just don't like it. Tear it out. And that was that. <laughs> And that's how we know yeah. that he was a stickler. But even so, he did have his light side. Apparently, as he uh, he loved playing croquet, we've got a few croquet shots from the collection. I drew up uh, after all of this research. We got a handful of um, I guess what I would call concluding remarks on Nicholson. His keys to success: number one, underbid the competition, integrity and reputation. Outstanding workmanship, and unimpeachable for the most part, uh, but also market timing. 1910s and 1920s were great time to be building. A lot of stuff going on. Banks, houses all over the place. The 30s were a mess until the late 30s. And that's when they got in on these New Deal projects. They mm -hmm. built some schools with that WPA money. Um, they might have built a courthouse addition too if things didn't, hadn't gone wrong. And I think they also had a low risk build philosophy. Not terribly innovative in terms of design for the most part, but they built things that were popular, uh, good sellers, <coughs> class folks, uh, solid, sustainable market, and they kept it in the family. With Kyle and Raymond coming up, uh, they kept the, kept the business going into the 60s at least, and I would bet a bit longer, but I just don't know, because I think most of the construction they did past 1960 is probably Kenton County. And I, live, I work in Boone County, so I'm looking at it. It's over there. Matt, speaking of Kenton County, yeah. Dixie Heights High School looks so much like Simon Kenton. Did they do that? It's possible. So does New Haven. <coughs> yeah. They all have that look. I, I don't know. I wouldn't doubt it. Basically, we found this out because of you, you go to the, the Northern Kentucky News Index at the Kenton County Library. You know, you just do Nicholson and pop these names up and associated with such and such a school. And, that wouldn't surprise me at all if you built half a dozen other ones. Uh, for thanks, I have, of course, credit Lori, who's not here, for doing all the research. Amber Benson, who is George's great-granddaughter, and has a treasure trove of information, including a docket about this thick of the Henry Nicholson versus Thomas Edison case. My father mentioned that. He also was in on a, a survey line for another railroad. I got an 1883 atlas from George Nicholson yeah. showing a routing, and it went down too. It was marked on the 1883 atlas, hmm. so he was involved in that also. I don't doubt it. I know we, I've got a couple of pictures, which I forgot to include, of him and uh, the boys building a road, and I think it's Southern Kenton County, I just don't know where yet. And it wasn't just a little street, it was a road. Uh, of course, Asa Rouse gave us uh, gave me some pictures and some information. Jack Rouse as well for his uh, uh, the interview you did with Lori. Bruce Ferguson for kind of giving me the idea to start with. Margo for, for all our help. Boone County Public Library. I have to thank them constantly. Uh, the review board and then Northern Kentucky Views. I don't think I've got any of your pictures on here, but I'm not sure. I've got the originals of them now. I think you had the originals to begin with scans of them, and then eventually somebody gave them to me. So, that's what I have to say about George. 
and sons. <laughs> time for three questions, then we're all going up. Any questions for him? Matt, the, the house in the Mount Washington where they did, do you have any idea where that was? Oh, I know exactly where it was. I walked by there constantly. It's right, it was right across from uh, Mount Washington School, right against the what was then the Georgetown, Portsmouth, et cetera, et cetera, railroad. Railroad's gone. You can still see where the right of way went through, but uh, all the houses on that side of the street for about a block, a block or so were gone and replaced by four family. And, uh, 60s, early 70s? I lived there the first 50 years of my life, so I was trying in my mind to try to figure out where it was. Right across from where the school is now. Mm -hmm. Gone, unfortunately. But anyway. Dr. Huey, when did he build your house, the one you live in now? In 1959. In 1959? Hey, there's another one. <coughs> That's a yeah. <coughs> between Walton and Memphis. It's a colonial. Did Kyle design it? Yes. Kyle designed it? He built three of them on Benjamin Avenue, too. Yes, on the north side of Benjamin Avenue. Mine's one out of Starting with Ann's and Bobby's and Pete's. And okay. The, the three yeah. branches on the north side of Benjamin. All Kyle? Mm -hmm. All Kyle. <coughs> Here we go. When was that? Do you know? About 1950. Jack, right? Probably. Early, early 50s. Very Probably, early 50s. Yeah. So that's what Kyle and Raymond got more into. More residential construction. Yeah. I haven't found any commercial or churches that Raymond and Kyle did. Seems like they did all houses. Except with the courthouse designs and the consolidated phone company. I don't know. May was almost your mother. Huh? Uh, May was almost your mother. I know, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's another story. My father went with May. <laughs> she was almost my mother. So <laughs> but she went with Dewey, so and Dewey was Dad's uh, real close friend. Kyle, uh, on the mill farm, which is no longer extant, which was created by the Southern Railroad, and my great grandfather and his brother put a flouring mill there. Anyway, we used to ice skate there and fish. And uh, Kyle was an excellent skater. He had that Olympic speed skating form in that he always clasped his hands behind him and took very deliberate steps like this. He was also an excellent runner, Kyle was trained in weighted boots and then when the, the uh, real serious tournaments come along he put on those light slippers and he was, uh, he was an excellent runner. Raymond uh, uh, was not athletic, shall we say. I have a general architecture question for Margo since Matt's busy. <laughs> 